All right, hello, my friends. I was digging through some books and uh, was digging through psychological commentaries on the teachings of Gurdjieff and Ispensky. Um, those of you who are familiar with Gurdjieff will um, probably immediately recognize the author, Maurice Nicole. He was um, a Scottish psychiatrist, very influential in that field. Not very influential in that field. I don't know if I can really say very because I don't know the subject well enough. But he was also one of the primary uh, teachers of Gurdjieff's Fourth Way. Um, for those who haven't studied it too deeply, uh, Gurdjieff didn't actually write to very much. And what he did write was uh, in kind of inscrutable, or at least very difficult to read, like the Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson. That's just, that's a that's a book to get through. So really, um, for me anyway, and I think this is true for most people, when you're studying Gurdjieff in the, the fourth way, you learn it mainly through his pupils, like Spensky, J.G. Bennett, people like that, and including Maurice Nichol. And I bought this series. It was originally, or not originally, it was published by Red Wheel, I believe. Um, Red Wheel Wiser LLC, first edition, or this edition published in 1996. Um, which is, I believe, is the year I bought it, if I'm not mistaken. I was pretty young when I bought this book. It doesn't. It's not just this book. This this book is part of. It's a big old box of books that you get. I think there were six of them. But um, I found this really beautiful essay, and I know that most of you out there, if you're following this channel, you are a seeker of some sort. Well, the essay that I found in here, I think, is a really beautiful essay um, about being a seeker. Kind of a. It's. Maurice writing to a seeker about him being a seeker. Now he specifically is talking about um, studying the fourth way, but I feel like it can apply to, or I feel like it does apply to seekers of all stripes. I just thought it was really beautiful and I would like to read it. Um, it's only one essay out of this massive book, so I, I'm hoping Red Wheel would be okay with me sharing it, and if not, they can say so and I will happily take it down. But, um, you know, this whole, this whole Apple Knocker Radio thing's been quite an experience, man. It's been quite an experience. It's kind of, it's kind of bringing me home, man. Kind of bringing me home to, um, feels like I'm getting back on a path that I wasn't supposed to leave or something like that. I don't know. It's been a long time since I delved seriously into these ideas. I can't believe I still have this series of books. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, let's not babble. Maurice Nicole. All right. It's a couple pages long. I don't know how long it takes to read a couple pages, but it's going to take a few minutes probably. But here is Maurice Nicole writing to somebody who identifies as Bush. So, dear Bush, as we were speaking at the meeting here at Birdlip on Saturday, April 25th, on a subject that is important, I would like to write to you a little about it. It concerns the way in which people take this work in how and in what spirit they work on themselves. I will begin with myself. I was brought up in regards to religious ideas with the sense that only the conviction of sin was important. Everything was sin, briefly speaking. In consequence, religion was a very gloomy business and personally I loathed it. Morality was only sexual morality. Virtue was only continence and so on, and in general, sin and feeling of being a sinner was the main idea of religion. I never understood anything else in regard to religion as a boy and so was either afraid or worried or hated the whole thing. I began to stammer badly. I listened to the scriptures, mostly drawn from the Old Testament, which always seemed indescribably horrible. God was a violent, jealous, evil, accusing person, and so on. And when I heard the New Testament, I could not understand what the parables meant, and no one seemed to know or care what they meant. But once, in the Greek New Testament class on Sundays, taken by the headmaster, I dared to ask, in spite of my stammering, what some parable meant. The answer was so confused that I actually experienced my first moment of consciousness. Um, that's... Uh, I don't want to go... To understand what he means by consciousness, so you probably have to understand a little bit about how Gurdjieff in the fourth way meant that term but anyway so that is i suddenly realized that no one knew anything this is a definite experience it was my first experience of self-remembering the second being the sudden realization that no one knew what i was thinking and from that moment i began to think for myself or rather knew that i could as you know all moments of real self-remembering stand out forever in one's inner life and one's real life is not outer events, but inner states. 
I remember so clearly this classroom, the high windows constructed so that we could not see out of them, the desks, the platform on which the headmaster sat, his scholarly thin face, his nervous habits of twitching his mouth and jerking his hands, and suddenly this inner revelation of knowing that he knew nothing, nothing, that is, about anything that really mattered. This was my first inner liberation from the power of external life. From that time, I knew for certain, and that means always by inner individual authentic perception, which is the only source of real knowledge, that all my loathing of religion as it was taught to me was right. And although one always goes to sleep again after a moment of real self-remembering, and often for years, yet such moments of consciousness always or stand always in higher parts of centers and remain in wait, as it were, the further moments of realizing more consciously what life actually is. That is to say, they are never lost, although forgotten in one way, stand in the background of oneself always and come forward at critical moments to guard you. Now, I wish to speak to you about how you work on yourselves and in what spirit you take the work. You cannot easily work from the ordinary religious ideas and moods. You recall the saying about new wine and old bottles. This work, this system of teaching, these ideas we are studying, are the most beautiful things you can possibly imagine. And they are new to us. No, they are far more lovely and beautiful than anything you can imagine. They accuse you only of being asleep. They hold no conviction of sin in them. They ask you quite gently to observe yourself. It is you yourself who must accuse yourself. Let us take one of the ideas of this teaching, an idea about essence. This teaching tells us that the essence of each of us comes down from the stars. You will remember the ray of creation. Essence comes down from the note law, in parentheses, starry galaxy, and passing through the note soul, in parentheses, the sun, and then the note fa, in parentheses, the planetary zone, enters the earth. We are not merely born of our parents. Our parents create the apparatus for the reception of this essence that comes from the stars. In all work, whether personal work, work with others in the work, or work for the work itself. And these are the three necessary lines of work for anyone who wishes to remain in this work, is to lead us back to where we have originally come from. Now, each one of us down here on this dark planet, so low down in the ray of creation, because he or she has some special thing in themselves, some special factor or chief factor to see, to observe, to be conscious of, to become conscious of, and to begin to dislike and so to work against. It may be meanness or cruelty or lying or self-pride or fear or ignorance and so on. And if a man or a woman dies without seeing why they are here, and what is the real reason of their lives, can it be called anything but a tragedy? Each one of you is here, on the earth, because from the work point of view, you have something very special and very important to see in yourselves, and struggle against, with all your skill and ingenuity with all your strength of mind and will and soul and heart and body. But of course, if you pride yourselves on your virtues, well, what can happen save that self-righteousness and so false personality will become increased every day you live? And the result will be that you will crystallize out in such narrow viewpoints and attitudes and become dead people. You have heard me speak of the meaning of the dead in the Gospels. For example, as in Christ's remark, let the dead bury the dead. The dead are those dead to all possibility of working on themselves and so changing themselves. Now, the work can only be done in the spirit of its own beauty and light, in the spirit of its true message and significance. Life on earth is nothing but a field for working on oneself, so that one can return from, once, from whence one came. To take life as an end in itself is not to understand the work. And it may cause a wrong attitude, which may be the source of many negative emotions and of useless efforts made in negative states. For to work in a negative way is useless. It is only through some kind of delight, some feeling of joy or pleasure, or some genuine affection or desire, 
that a person can work and bring about any change of being in himself. Fear, for example, will not act in this way. A man may have some knowledge of truth, but unless he values it, unless he feels some delight in it, it cannot affect him. It cannot act on him. For a man unites with truth only through his love, as it were, and in this way his being is changed. But if he is negative, then his love life, that is, his emotional side, is in a wrong state, and it will be the same if he is in a state of fear and feels compelled to do something against his will. To do a thing willingly, from a delight in doing it, will affect a change in you. And when a person begins to take up his own cross, that is, the burden of some difficult thing in himself that he has at last come to observe, and does it in such a spirit, then he will get results. But if he does it heavily, out of the conviction of sin, nothing will ever come out of it, and especially if he shows others what he is trying to do, and likes to look miserable or grave or sad. And in this connection you will remember what Christ said about fasting, namely that if you fast, you should anoint your head and wash your face, that thou be not seen of men to fast. To work on oneself from the conviction of sin puts the work into negative parts of centers. And to work in a negative way can lead to a worse state of oneself than not to work at all. Some tend to take the work in this heavy way. But no one can fathom the delight people take in making themselves miserable and enjoying their negative states. You all know and have often, often heard me say that negative parts of centers create nothing. When I first heard Mr. O, I assume that's Mr. Ospensky, say that negative parts of centers cannot create anything and that people who try to work in a heavy, dreary, negative state could only make their inner state worse than it was, then I think I experienced almost another moment of consciousness. I understood that what I had felt about religion had been right. It was suddenly formulated and explained. This work, if you will listen to it and hear it in your hearts, is the most beautiful thing you could possibly hear. It speaks not of sin, but of being asleep. Just as the Gospels do not really speak of sin, but only of missing the mark. The Greek word means that. Can we hear the work? There is an old book that I have, composed by a man in the work of his time. It depicts a man lying asleep flat on the earth, in a ladder stretching to heaven, and angels on it blowing trumpets almost in the man's ear. Yet he hears nothing. He is asleep in life. Perhaps he is a millionaire or some other very important person, or simply a harassed clerk, or a worried mother, and so on. This work is beautiful when you see why it exists and what it means. It is about liberation. It is as beautiful as if, locked for years in prison, you see a stranger entering who offers you a key. But you may refuse it because you have acquired prison habits and have forgotten your origin, which is from the stars. How then, Will you ever be able to remember yourself with only prison thoughts and interests and hand back your life whole and not twisted and soiled by negative emotion in every form of identifying? It will then be only natural for you to refuse the key that will unlock all the doors of the prison, one by one, because you prefer to remain in prison, that is, as you are in yourself, nay, even more, you may be indignant and seek to kill the stranger and fight for your prison life and even sacrifice your life in order to remain in prison. Yours, Maurice Nicole. Man, that's good stuff. I think it is anyway. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of things I want to say, but I'm not going to say. It's an emotional thing to return to these books. Uh, I got away from them. And even recently as of, uh, yeah, I don't know. Starting this channel has been interesting. I spoke previously about how my main uh, motivation in starting this channel was to interview people like Mark Stavish, like John Michael Greer, um, all these sorts of people. And that is true. But I don't think that was the full motivation. And you know, I I joke a lot, and I'll always joke a lot, because I like to joke, and I think life should be fun, and I think life should be funny. 
and I don't think we should take ourselves too seriously. But um, but these are things that they mean a great deal to me, and uh, they especially when I was younger and before I became more. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. What I'm trying to say, I'm not just trying to blab about myself. What I'm trying to say is I feel like this has something to do with where the direction of this channel is going to go. Because I am by no means a master, and yet, I'm not even close to a master. I can't even call myself a student. But, I don't know. I feel like maybe sharing this type of thing as an explorer and as a learner is part of the reason why I started this channel. And it's funny, because you know, in the year 2022, to say... Um, to say that that has any kind of meaning, sharing spiritual search, searchings, seekings, seems preposterous, right? Because we, we've come to this point where it's like you're just kind of supposed to be ashamed of such things. Here is Maurice Nicole, man. Was there any shame in that letter? None. He was completely um, confident in the seriousness and the gravity and the beauty the beauty you could feel the, the beauty in that essay man um, in, in the what he felt was the beauty of the work and of the all of our lives all of your lives right that it means something and the universe um, has a stake in your choices not in an egotistical way, not in a kind of self-obsessed, new agey way. It's different than that. The fourth way wasn't like that. I'm not trying to offend new age people. I'm sorry about using that term. Um, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Stop talking now. Just enjoy the great essay by Maurice Nicole. Peace out.